Imagine a six-lane highway slicing through the countryside, but the farms are still alive. No bulldozed fields, no dead rivers, wildlife still crossing above and below the road. It sounds impossible, but China just built it. And the way they did it could completely redefine how the world builds infrastructure. Here's what makes this story incredible. Building highways normally means one thing, destruction. You clear the land, relocate the people, drain the wetlands, and pave over everything. That's been the playbook for decades. In China alone, over 180,000 kilometers of expressways have been built since the 1980s. Most of them followed that same brutal formula. But this project? Completely different. The location was a patchwork of working farmland, century-old fish ponds, and ecosystems that local communities depended on for their livelihoods. We're talking about rice paddies that have fed families for generations, fish farms that supply regional markets, wetlands that filter water and support dozens of species. The traditional approach would have displaced thousands of people, destroyed hundreds of hectares of productive land, wiped out aquatic habitats that took decades to establish. Instead, Chinese engineers asked a radical question. What if we don't? What if instead of forcing nature and people to move for the highway, we design the highway to move around them? The scale of this challenge is staggering. Imagine trying to thread a needle while riding a motorcycle, at highway speeds, in the rain. That's essentially what they committed to doing. And here's the crazy part. They had to do it while still meeting deadlines, staying within budget, and creating a highway that could handle modern traffic volumes. It was a fully functional piece of critical infrastructure that needed to work perfectly on day one. Most engineers would have called it impossible. So how do you build a highway that does not destroy what's underneath it? The answer is, you build it above. The engineering team designed massive elevated sections. Think of them as bridges, but instead of crossing a river for a few hundred meters, these elevated roadways stretch for kilometers. The highway literally floats above the landscape. But here's where it gets fascinating. These aren't just random elevated sections. Every single pillar, every support structure, every curve in the road was planned with surgical precision. Engineers spent months mapping the area with drones, satellites and ground surveys. They identified every fish pond, every irrigation canal, every patch of productive farmland. Then they played what I can only describe as the world's most complex game of Tetris. Support pillars were positioned in narrow strips of land between fields. Elevated sections were angled to follow natural contours. The concrete pillars themselves are engineered marvels. Each one is designed to have the smallest possible footprint. Instead of massive rectangular supports that would claim huge chunks of land, they used slender cylindrical pillars. Some are less than three meters in diameter, about the size of a large tree trunk. Think about what that means. A full-sized highway carrying thousands of vehicles per day, supported by structures that take up less space than a small garden shed. But the elevated design solved only part of the problem. Water flow was another massive challenge. Fish ponds and rice paddies depend on carefully managed water systems. Irrigation canals, drainage patterns, natural water tables, all of this had to remain functional. One miscalculation could flood farmland or drain ponds that entire communities relied on. The solution? Hydrological engineering that borders on art. Engineers designed the support structure to work with water, not against it. Pillars were positioned to avoid disrupting natural drainage patterns. In wetland areas, they installed permeable foundations that allow water to flow underneath. Special drainage channels were built into the elevated sections to manage runoff without contaminating the ponds below. During the rainy season, when water levels rise, the system automatically channels excess water away from farmland and back into natural waterways. During dry periods, the design ensures that what little water is available reaches the fields and ponds that need it most. One farmer interviewed during construction said something remarkable. We did not even notice they were building a highway above us until we saw the road deck going up. His rice paddies never flooded. His irrigation schedule never changed. He did not lose a single harvest during three years of construction. Now here's where this project goes from impressive to almost unbelievable. Building infrastructure without displacing people and farms is one thing. But what about the animals? China has been dealing with a massive problem for years. Highways that fragment wildlife habitats. Animals get cut off from feeding grounds, breeding areas and water sources. Migration routes get severed. Roadkill becomes an epidemic. Entire populations get isolated and start to collapse. This highway needed to cross areas 
used by several species, including some that are already under pressure from habitat loss. The question was not just how do we not harm them during construction, but how do we make sure this highway does not destroy their way of life for the next 50 years? The answer is wildlife corridors, but not the basic token efforts you sometimes see. This is next level. Engineers integrated multiple types of crossings into the highway design, overpasses covered with vegetation that blend seamlessly into the natural landscape. Animals don't even realize they're crossing a highway. They just see continuous forest or grassland. Underpasses designed specifically for different species. Some are high and wide for larger mammals. Others are smaller tunnels for reptiles and amphibians. Water-filled culverts that allow fish and aquatic creatures to move between connected waterways, even though a highway runs overhead. But building these structures is only half the battle. Animals won't use them unless they feel safe. So the team worked with wildlife biologists to understand animal behavior. What makes a deer willing to cross? What scares them away? How do you guide animals towards safe passages without them even knowing they're being guided? The result is a system that uses natural features, hedgerows, tree lines, and terrain to funnel wildlife toward the crossing points. From an animal's perspective, they're just following the path of least resistance through familiar territory. They have no idea they're being directed to use a specially designed overpass. Lighting was another critical factor. Many animals are nocturnal and sensitive to artificial light. So the highway uses targeted, directional lighting that illuminates the road for drivers, but doesn't spill into wildlife corridors. The crossing zones stay dark and natural. Noise barriers were strategically placed not just for human communities, but also to protect sensitive habitats from traffic sounds. Some birds and mammals are extremely sensitive to constant noise. It disrupts breeding, feeding, and migration patterns. Early monitoring data shows the system is working. Wildlife is using the corridors. Roadkill incidents are dramatically lower than on comparable highways. Species that were predicted to avoid the area entirely are thriving. Here's something that often gets overlooked in mega project stories, the human side. Big infrastructure projects typically follow a top-down model. The government decides, engineers design, construction companies build, and local people just have to deal with it. Complaints are filed, protests happen, but the project moves forward regardless. This highway flipped that script. From the very beginning, the engineering team worked directly with local communities, not token consultation meetings where decisions have already been made. Real collaboration. Farmers were asked, what do you need to keep working? Where are your irrigation lines? When do you need access to your fields? What times of day are most critical for your operations? Fish pond operators provided detailed information about water levels, breeding cycles, and harvest schedules. This information directly influenced construction timelines. Certain activities were paused during breeding seasons. Others were scheduled around harvest periods. Village leaders helped identify cultural sites and historical landmarks that needed protection. In some cases, the highway route was adjusted by hundreds of meters to preserve a temple or a memorial that held significance for the community. This level of collaboration required something rare in large construction projects, patience. Normally, delays cost money and create pressure to cut corners, but the project leadership made a different calculation. They recognized that taking extra time to get community buy-in and address concerns would actually save time and money in the long run by avoiding conflicts, legal challenges, and design mistakes. One village elder told reporters, they did not just ask us once and leave. They came back dozens of times. Every time they made a change to the design, they showed us and asked if it would work for us. That kind of iterative process is almost unheard of in projects of this scale. The result is a highway that serves its transportation purpose while strengthening rather than disrupting community relationships. Local people don't see it as an imposition. They see it as infrastructure that was built with them, not despite them. Now let's talk about why this matters beyond one highway in China. The world is facing a massive infrastructure challenge. Developing countries need roads, bridges, railways, and ports to support economic growth. But we're building this infrastructure at a time when environmental degradation and climate change are reaching critical levels. The old model says you have to choose development or environment, economic growth or nature preservation, jobs or ecosystems. This highway proves that's a false choice. Urban planners and engineers from dozens of countries have already visited the project to study its methods. 
international development organizations are incorporating its lessons into infrastructure guidelines. Universities are using it as a case study in sustainable engineering. What makes this project truly revolutionary is that it demonstrates sustainable infrastructure is possible and practical. The highway came in on budget. It opened on schedule. It functions exactly as intended for transportation, but it also preserved farmland, protected ecosystems, and maintained community livelihoods. That combination of outcomes used to be considered impossible. Now, it's a proven model. Countries across Southeast Asia, Africa, and Latin America are planning massive infrastructure expansions over the next two decades. Roads, railways, power lines, water systems, trillions of dollars in construction. If even a fraction of those projects adopt similar principles, the cumulative impact on biodiversity, agricultural land, and community well-being could be enormous. But here's the challenge. This approach requires upfront investment in planning, design, and community engagement. It requires engineers who think beyond just building roads. It requires government officials willing to prioritize long-term sustainability over short-term cost savings. Not every country or company is ready for that shift. For decades, progress meant sacrifice. Building the future meant bulldozing the past. But this project suggests another way, where design, planning, and collaboration let us build with nature, not against it. The technology exists. The engineering works. The only question left is, do we have the will to use it? China built one highway this way? What about the next thousand? What about the ones rising right now in your country? Let us know what you think in the comments. If you think building a highway without harming nature is impressive, wait until you see what China did with water. Imagine an entire ship being lifted straight over a mountain, not through a tunnel, not around it, over it. It's one of the most complex engineering feats on Earth, and almost no one outside China has seen how it really works. Click watch next to see that video. Thanks for watching.